everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and I've got another tutorial album for you and I really think that you're going to like this. A lot of flips, a lot of fold outs, pockets, and photo placement areas. So let's take a look at the album and as you can see it's a quite large album. It's a 7x9 we have a good sized spine there. Now I don't know if you can tell or not, but these are layered frames. And then there is the clear acetate covering the popped up truck and little thing there. So it's kind of dimensional for this. Now on this tutorial you can opt in for the flowers or out and it looks clean no matter what you do there. And there is a lot of good spacing in here, so if you do want to put the more bulkier flowers, you can. Let's get into it. I love this collection. It is absolutely amazing. It's the Cartabella Home Again. And uh, what we have up here is a magnetic flip. And I'm going to bring this down so you can see a little better. Now behind here you can stash photo mats. Here I have a folder that was put back behind there. And this magnetically flips out. So there's a great place right here for photo placement. This is a small little tuck area and I just placed a picture mat in there. Great place for a photo there too. This comes out again. And I really like this design that I did because you can get a lot of stuff into this. This is a little tuck and a side pocket and another pocket. So I have a picture mat in there. Here I have a picture mat tucked back behind. And in here I have my larger photo mats. And with this is just a folder. I did not back it with cardstock. I just folded it over and I'll place my photos right in like that. So it's a really neat uh, design there. And then this just all goes back on in. Real simple. Over here, all we have is a very large side pocket with a little tuck area. And I've put these two here. And photo mats. And I have a larger one here. I have a one here, I have not backed it yet with my cardstock. And then a nice folder. And then I'll just tuck these right on back behind. Going to our next page here, we have a very large flip and this would be a nice place to put a photo if you want it or just leave it alone. This flips up and we have a tuck. And I did place a photo mat right up in there. This will flip down and there is a nice spot to place a photo. This also is a wonderful spot to place a photo, maybe two smaller ones or something else. This will fold out and as you can see there's just a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of places. This is a tuck and I did place a picture mat, however you can just put a photo in there, put a photo on here and layer that right on top. And what we have here is a tuck. Now this is a very shallow area, maybe about this much tucked in there and I just put a photo mat. You can put a photo here. And here is our large side pocket. You can get your 4x6's in there and your 5x7's. So this has a place to journal on and a photo placement. So just kind of showing you what I've been able to come up with with my photo mats on this. And that just all kind of goes back. Over here we have a very large pocket and up front is a magnetic little folder. You can place your photo here, you can journal over here, but also you can tuck back behind this if you would want it to. And that'd be cool, just place a photo here to tuck it there. And then in the back is our very large pocket. Our next page, we have a lot going on on this. This is just a little tuck and I have a little tag there. This flips up and you have a large space right there. 
or your photos. And this is just a little waterfall. And you can place photo right here. This will flip out. And again, photo placements here. And we have a little side pocket. And I put oversized picture mats in there. This flips out again. And we have a tuck area and places for photo mats. Over here, we have just a very large space to place photos. Our next two pages are spaced out pockets, meaning you can get a lot stacked in there on each one of these pockets. These here are magnetic little folders, and they fold out so you can get some photos in there. And there's also a tuck right behind, and I kind of fold it up one of those little things and put it back behind there. Back here is where I have I have one of these. I did not back it with cardstock and some photo mats. Just kind of all in there. Over here I have two larger photo mats. Alright, coming to the last pages. This is a very large tuck area. I have a picture mat that was back behind. And I have a very large folder. And place some photos in there. Just slides back in. Over here, now this, and I'm not going to be able to get everything into frame, I'm afraid, but here's a great place to place a photo. This is magnetic. It will fold out, and you can place more photos. But what happens is, is when you turn this back over, there is more spaces right here to put photos. And then this will fold out, and I think I got all the options here. Let's see. Yep. And then this will fold out. We have a pocket on the side, and I have a very large picture mat and a smaller one in there. Okay, for this, this is the other side of the fold out, and we have a tuck area back here. And I tucked a larger photo mat and a smaller one back behind. And this just pulls out, and we can fold this out, and we have two inner pockets. So this is quite the album, guys, and um, if you are a beginner, you can make this. I make it so easy for you, and uh, it's just step by step, and uh, we create this together in the video tutorial. So that is the album that we will be making today. And, oh, one thing I wanted to point out, we just updated our pricing list, and you will find that on adhesives, a bunch of different things, our Stamperia, our main brand uh, paper collections, the prices will be a lot of competitors. Um, I went and did a price check around, and I wanted to bring... I wanted to bring the prices down as much as I could, and you will find uh, some really low prices. So be sure to head on over to my store after checking out the materials list. Let's run through really quickly the materials list for this tutorial. Um, you're going to want the Cartabella Home Again paper pack. In fact, you're going to need two of them. And I have one open here, and I'm just going to just kind of show you what we get. We get a lot of good stuff in here that's usable. Now this is the 12 by 12 little sticker sheet. And we have a lot of cool colors in here to work with. You got your cut aparts. And this is a really thick, good quality uh, paper here. And I'm all thumbs today. 
isn't that adorable? I love this color. Uh, the blues, the, the, the darker. This is going to look really good. So two of these. You're going to want uh, some plastic, and this is an eight and a half by 11 plastic sheet. It's not a thin, thin. This is a really good quality that we have in our store. So we will need that. Tyvek, I have a small little piece here, but you will need a couple Tyvek strips. Tyvek is a very durable, strong, non-terrible type material, and you sometimes see them on the sides of houses when they're building it. So it's good stuff. It's what's going to keep our album spine and covers from separating. Um, American Crafts AC cardstock. This is 80 pound. This is 12 by 12. This is called brown sugar and you get about 25 sheets in here. It's a really good buy so we'll be using that. You're going to need two pieces of chipboard and on the pre-cutting measurement and scoring guide um, always cut the first number you see. So uh, for our covers we would need a 7 by 9 inch uh, for our cover so you'd cut seven first and then the nine and that way you have enough left over for the other pieces of chipboard that's needed for this uh, tutorial. You're going to want some Zot singles. These are 3D and they are acid free and they're permanent and uh, they're clear and these say that they are approximately a half inch in diameter by one eighth inch thick. Perfect for what we need. Glossy accents. You're going to want some glossy accents for some of our sentiments and our flowers that we will be making. For the center of our flowers, uh, grab some prills. Um, whatever color it is that you would like. I'm going to use lemon chiffon. That's my favorite go-to. But even the white little minis, any colored uh, prills, they work. For my flowers, I'm going to be using the Wild Aster Dye and Stamp. And I use this in my past tutorials, and it is something new, and it even comes with your leaf. So those I will be using, and I'll show you quickly how to shape them um, when we get to that part of adding flowers. I decided to use a bunch of my dies. So if you're not a die cutter, I will be releasing a tutorial on how to use a die cutting machine. Um, a lot of these I've already, actually all of them, I've used in past tutorials, so you may already have these. The Heartfelt Creations Decorated Pocket Accents, the Heartfelt Creations Eyelet Rectangle and Basics, Frame a Card Leafy Borders, well, one of my all-time favorites now, I love that die. Regal Borders and Pockets and Ornate Borders and Pockets. Adhesives. I am using the Art Glitter Dries Clear Adhesive and you'll definitely want to make sure you get that metal tip if you are uh, needing to get some of this. But there's no glitter in it, it's just really good glue. In this tutorial you'll want to alternate between a 3 8 inch score tape and a quarter inch score tape. So you'll want one of each. Magnets. You'll want two packs of magnets. We will be using one full pack and some out of the other one. And I'm using the basic gray, and these are the large magnets. And there is 12 per pack. For our side closure of our album, you're going to want a Dritz hook and eye. And these are the extra large. Here's the hook, and here's the eye. We sell these uh, as well as everything else you see in this tutorial in my store. Uh, three come per pack, depending on the style you choose. So this one is just the regular smooth nickel plated. For my flowers and leaves, um, what I have for the leaves, and Glossy Accents is on this, you can see how shiny and pretty those are, but I use two colors, Peeled Paint and Crushed Olive. Peeled Paint is what I use to stamp the image, and then I go around and kind of blot on darker places, and Crushed Olive is what you blot on to get that color on there, and you get this. Now for the flowers, I don't have my Glossy Accents on it yet. I've got ink on me, but no glossy accents on there. Summer Sky by Memento is the best color I could find to match in beautifully, and it does. And we also are going to be using Bundled Sage, and it is a totally different color than our leaves, and it looks really good 
especially when you get those leaves back behind, it just really pops. And then once you have your glossy accents on there, as you saw on the cover of my album in the showing, um, it looks wonderful, as well as the leaves behind this. And it all works together very beautifully. And I'll be showing you the inking technique and um, how to shape those when we get to that spot. And now after applying the glossy accents, you can see there's a bit of a difference there. And these are dry. Things that you're going to need for this tutorial. Of course, you're going to need your scoring board and you're going to need your paper cutter. You're also going to need your cutting mat for this. You're going to want scissors. You're going to want a ruler, uh, your bone folder, scoring tool, pencil with an eraser, and definitely your craft knife is needed for this. So if you have a dull blade on it, replace it with a new one. That is it. That's all that's needed. Let's move on to constructing our album together. We're going to start building our base album. So on your pre-cutting measurement scoring guide, if you want to have that out, you can just check it off. Make sure you have everything here. And mine is in no particular order, but I'm going to try and do it in the order of which we cut them on the sheet. So we had two 7 by 9 inch covers, and they were chipboard. We have one 3 by seven inch piece of chipboard, we called it a spine. We had a five by seven chipboard and we called it frame. We had a four by six chipboard and we called that frame cardstock. You cut a three inch by five inch and we called it a frame template. And I'm gonna need my scoring board out for this next one. We cut four pieces that were six and a half by nine inches. And we called these our inner pages. We scored each one, and what is under this? Aha. Uh -huh. And we scored each one at eight and three eighths. We have our spine cover, and that is six and a half inches by five and a half inches. You will also have two six and a half by eight and a quarter pieces that we call inner covers. We also cut two very large pieces. They were both nine and three quarter by 12 inches, and we called this the album wrap. Tyvek, we cut two pieces that were one and a quarter inch wide by seven inches long. Last piece, on our plastic, we were three and seven eighths by five and three quarters. Let's begin, and you're gonna need your craft knife for this and your cutting mat and your ruler. The chipboard pieces that we want are the four by six, the five by seven, and we're gonna start with one of our seven by nine covers. And you're gonna want your little three by five template. If you are using my ruler, it is two inches wide. And I'm going to remove this black piece of cardstock off the back. If you are not, what you're going to do is lay your ruler down, measure in two inches, and you should be nine inches across. So two inches, put a little pencil line, seven inches, a pencil line, flip it this way, and you should be seven inches at two inches, pencil line, and at five. On this particular piece, if you are using my ruler, it makes it very, very easy. Uh, you just line up the side with your chipboard and line up the top and the bottom. And at two inches, you mark it, whoops, you mark it all the way down to the five. And you can come over here, line up your side, and I'm gonna flip this around so I can see the bigger side. I'm seven inches, make sure I'm lined up with the side there. That 
looks good. From two to the five. And that should keep you straight. Down here, what you'll want to do is line this up with the bottom. Make sure you are at the zero on the side using my ruler. And from the two to the seven, draw a line. Same thing up here. And you can just kind of use this. and draw. Okay, that should be what this is here by laying it down. So if you were not using my ruler, you marked in two and five and two or two and seven and two and five. You have, if you place this down, this will keep you straight and you can just draw around this piece. And that's what you're going to get. The same thing here grab your craft knife and again if you're using my ruler it's going to make it very easy for you just line up your sides again you just start here and just lightly start scoring and then each time you make a pass you can go a little bit more pressure there until you get all the way through so the object of this is we are just going to keep doing that until whoops I'm righty not a lefty keep doing that until you cut out this metal piece and we'll continue on until we pop that piece out now once you pop your piece out it is not that critical if it doesn't look that great. We will be wrapping on the inside of this to clean it up. However I do recommend going through and kind of running your your tool just to try and get off any shards or whatever in the corner so that it's a nice corner. Just take your time. Just clean it up a little. So that's what you should have. We'll set that one aside. This you don't need right now. You can just stick that off in a pile for other projects. I don't think we'll be using that again. Let's grab the 5x7. We're going to be doing the same thing. Use your template. And what you can do is measure from top to bottom, side to side, to make sure that you're even. And we'll just draw around it. Okay. We can also, on our 4x6 chipboard, we can also get started on that one and we'll be doing the same thing. And what you can do is just measure to make sure here and here is even, side to side is even. We'll draw and we will cut that out with our craft knife. Now the only one that really is critical that we clean up pretty good is the top one. We do not wrap around that. We do leave it black. Good enough. Let's start cutting out and around our piece. Now on the smallest one that we won't be wrapping, what you'll want to do is after you try uh, cutting it out and clipping it, flip it to the other side. Sometimes that ends up being the cleanest side. So that's just a little tip. And I'm going to continue on with cutting this one out. Now that we have all of our pieces ready to go, the two smaller ones we can set off to the side. What we're going to start working with is our 7x9 covers, the one with the hole and one with the chipboard. And we're going to want our 3x7 spine chipboard. And we can just set that off to the side. Let's start off with the 9 and 3 quarter by 12 inch pieces. And on this one, 9 and 3 quarter by 12 inch album wrap. Now you don't have to erase any of this because uh, it it does not show. So we'll start off with these and we are nine and three quarters tall so that's what I want you to write up here. Nine and three quarters at the top so that we know we're going to line these up right and we're 12 inches wide. We're going to take a piece of score tape just to one side here right along the edge 
And if you have any score tape peeking over the edge, you'll want to clip that off. We'll burnish that down really good. Now one thing you may want to do is grab your cutting board and we're not going to cut. What we're going to do is use the flat edge up here so that we can stay straight. And I'm going to grab my other piece here. I'm going to remove the score tape backing from this piece. I'm going to make sure I am lined up. This is at the top here and I'm pushed all the way up so it is nice and straight. This is where I bring this one right on over at the top. And I use the flat edge up here to bring this over. And that should get you straight along the bottom. If you're a little off, that's okay. All right, for this piece, and we will have to cut out and around but uh, and, and do our thing but right now let's just get this ready to go. Um, you'll want to place this down and your spine piece this is the one that really matters because our seams in the middle that seam should not be anywhere near the gap that we are going to put in there I'd say so we'll want to be about an inch in from the side here and just kind of center that top to bottom. We'll shimmy that on over and maybe a quarter inch would be good in between there. So you can measure in a quarter inch. Where did my thing go here? So once you think you have these where they need to be, from this piece over here, yeah about a quarter inch is what we want. We're going to place our spine piece about a quarter inch in away and we're going to make sure we're lined up with the bottom of it and we're just going to draw around this piece to start and we're going to draw around our other one as well but let's just get our spine where it needs to be hopefully I didn't move that looks good okay I've got that one we'll place this one again make sure we're even and we will draw around this one. I'm getting crazy with my drawing. Okay, so that is that. And we'll take this one, we'll measure in a quarter inch over from that. We'll line up and we can draw around this piece now. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now we know how these are going to place once we get our score tape down. Now for this, because it has the cutout, and that's going to be on our left side, place this back down. That way we don't waste score tape. And I think I'm good there. We're going to use our pencil and just draw. So we know we don't have to put uh, score tape in there right now. Let's grab our 3 8 inch score tape. All right, so for this, we're going to lay our score tape directly down on our piece. And we'll go all the way around like a picture frame here. Place it right on in there. Now we do have a dritz closure for the side, which is going to be over here. Let's place a second one here. And we're going to line around that middle piece. We might as well just bring it all the way over. It's fine way around that one and I think that's going to be plenty for that. Now our spine piece let's just go right along the inside and we'll do that too like a little picture frame there and I think I'll just go one right on that seam and I'll do one next to it and we'll get to the back piece here and we'll line that. 
Now for the back piece, we'll just put one down the middle, and I think we'll be fine with going here and here. However, over here on the edge, you'll want to put a second piece because the back side of that uh, dritz is going to need something. All right, let's start removing the score tape, backing here, and we'll place our first piece together. Let's grab this and place it. Now we'll cut this out after we get the album wrapped. So let's start with the spine, and remember there is a space, so we've got to be mindful of that because this is whenever you are wrapping the outside of uh, the chipboard, you do have to leave spaces in between your covers and your spine. Otherwise, if you don't, it will not close, and the only time you can leave that space out is if you're using um, just the natural. All right, here's our spine piece. Let's just make sure we're lining up right. That's good. Let's take the score tape off the back piece and we will place that one. All right, let's flip this over and burnish. Okay, let's grab our tie back. With your 3 8 inch, we're just going to line a piece here on the side and right down the middle. And we're going to do that with the other piece as well. Now Tyvek is kind of hard to manage because it will want to crinkle up on you. If it does and you get some wrinkles, uh, it's not the end of the world because um, these do get covered. The most important thing I can tell you is after laying any of your score tape or even glue for that matter, matter down on anything, you definitely have to burnish down with your uh, tool to make sure that's down really good. And get all that air out from beneath the tape and your material because air can get trapped underneath and when that happens um, it can start drying out and then you can get liftage. So we're going to place our first one here. There we go. And don't worry if you have seams, um, anything like that, you can just place a little glue. Anyway, we're just going to place that right over that seam there. I must have miscut mine because it's not quite tall enough, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Then we're going to do the same thing. Remove the score tape, place it down, burnish it down. I've got both my tie back pieces down. Now one thing with album wrapping is a lot of people would get what they call the splits on the side. So I'm going to show you a technique that hopefully will help you so you don't get that. What you're going to want to do, and we'll start over here, is just kind of bend. And the stronger the, the paper, the harder it is to bend. So just kind of give it a soft little bend there. Now take your tool. First you can go on the inside to kind of crease there, but get underneath that ledge and bring it all the way up against the chipboard. And just kind of go like this to get that going there. Next you'll take this and just kind of push it over. Work those fibers. That's all there is, and we're going to be doing that with each one of our sides, the top and the bottom as well. So I'll just kind of give that a little bit of a bend, take my tool, get it under there, and push until I hit that chipboard. And then I'll just take this and just go like this. Okay, let's finish up by doing the last side. 
Okay, I am done, and I'm going to flip this back around where my cover's on my left side. We're going to grab our 3 8 inch score tape. And the first thing we'll do is just go right under that lip of our chipboard onto our paper. And we're going to go all the way around like a picture frame to start. Once you have that, now what we're going to do is the same thing, but we are going to line the outside edges all the way around. Once you burnish down your score tape, we are ready to clip the edges so that we can get a nice wrap. Now, you see where the corner of your chipboard is? Uh, what we're going to want to do is cut at an angle, but leave 1 8 inch space from that. So I'll show you. I'm just going to cut. You don't need to measure, just cut. And I'm going to do the same over here, leaving about an eighth. And I'm not quite an eighth there, but... And we'll go up here. And over here. Alrighty, we are ready. So what I like to do first is to pull in my sides. And we'll do that. And sometimes though, when pulling in your sides, you do need to pull back the score tape from the inners down here. At least I do. Now don't jump ahead because we do have to tuck our edges when we get to the top and bottom. But for this, we're just going to fold it over. You don't have to pull tight, because when you do too tight, that's when you run into problems. So once you have that down, just make sure that you burnish that down. And we'll come over to this side and do the same thing. Pull this and fold it over. It is time to wrap the bottom and what you can do is you can use your fingernails. Whoops, I bumped the camera. You can use your fingernails by coming over here and pushing in just like I did. Just like that. Or you can use your tool and kind of come around the edge like that and it'll push it in for you. Now we're ready, and I like to start right here in the center and press over. Now, on that seam, that's where you're going to find sometimes it wants to do that. Let's, before we do anything, take care of that. So I'm going to add a little glue. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, and I'm just going to wrap it over. And I'll pat. All done. Okay, down here you can use the side of your tool and just press if you have bulk. And then we will burnish. Let's do the other side. And we will tuck in our corners. I'm going to come around with my tool here. And I'm going to start right here. And again, I get that. Not too concerned. Just press. Make sure your hands are clean. Dab some glue and run it like that and press. All done. Okay, over here I'm just going to use my tool. Flatten that down. All right, here is our cover. The next thing that we're going to want to grab at is the six and a half by five and a half inch cover. How this is going to place, and it'll be writing side down, is we're going to co completely cover this with score tape. We're going to place this so it's centered top to bottom, 
and it's going to come over, hang over evenly. And this is what's going to help us keep our hinges straight. So we'll want to use our 3 8 inch, I think. And the first thing I'm going to do is go around the outside like a picture frame. All the way around. And if you get any score tape that hangs over the edge, you're going to definitely want to clip that. Now all we're going to want to do is lay score tape side by side all the way across. I took the score tape backing off, but let's just make sure before you place this so you don't place it the wrong way, grab your ruler. Make sure you are going to place this to where you are six and a half inches tall. And I'm going to try and stay even somewhere top and bottom. You definitely want to stay uh, with a straight, as straight as you can when doing this because this is your guide. Once you have that down, we are going to burnish really well. And spend a moment to really get that tape down because next we're going to fold our album in. So place your hand on the spine and slowly move up. Okay. Now one thing, it, this is going to be pretty stiff to start, but over time it loosens up a bit. It's just like a new book. So same thing, keep your hand on the spine, get your hand under here and slowly lift up. Now I do not recommend using glue, at least for me, I've never had luck, um, instead of that score tape when it comes to this part. So we're just gonna slowly work that. So it is going to want to flop out, but you can kind of give it a little bends here. Not too much, but enough. Once you have that, open that back up. This is where you are going to need your little cutting mat, and we're gonna wrap that in on the inside. So take your craft knife to the corner and just cut in. And we're going to do this with each corner. Okay. Does not have to be perfect because mine is not. Just make sure you cut all the way through. Okay, so this is where you'll want your little tool. And we're going to do the same thing. Just kind of help it out. Get in there and we'll clip it in just a moment. But we're gonna do that little thing so we don't get the splits. So softly help it out there a little. Then get your tool up. All right, let's just grab our scissors now. And we're just gonna clip. You don't have to be precise. Leave yourself about a half inch or so. We're not going to see this. You just need to have some sort of lip. This is where we can use our glue. And we're just going to pull those in and burnish. Mine looks all cattywampus because of the way I cut mine. So, the cover should look really nice. And I'm gonna push up against that, make sure it's nice. Looks good. We're gonna set this off to the side for just a moment here. Grab your inner pages, the six and a half by nine. And what we're going to do with that is, first, we're just going to fold on those score lines and we'll leave it so we are peak up. And for this album, I gave us just a little more space. So we are going to grab our 3 8 inch score tape. And here is our flap, the peak is up. I'm gonna lay my score tape just to the side of that peak. I don't wanna get it on there. 
and then what we're going to do is grab our quarter inch and lay it in the space over off to the side. And it will overlap, but it's okay if it does. And we'll just get it on in there. Inspect your piece. If you can see anything peeking over, you're definitely going to clip that. Next, grab your tool, whichever tool you're using, and burnish. Make sure you get that really good there. So that is what we have. Let's move on. We're going to continue doing this for each one. I have all four of mine ready to go. So when you're doing this, make sure your cutout is on the left side because that is our cover. And before I take the score tape off, I'm going to quickly show you what it is we will be doing. This is our hinge and you can see the hinges, hinges on the spine piece. What we're going to do is remove the score tape backing off of this. We're going to pull up our side and if you notice that spine cover piece is the same height as this. That is what's going to keep us straight. So we'll pull in this first one. This will slide right up against your cover and you'll line up top and bottom with that piece and we're going to place it. Again, make sure that you have no score tape or anything peeking over as it will show. Let's do this. So I'm going to remove the... Here we go. I'm going to pull that up, line it up, top and bottom, and press in. That's how simple it is. And we're going to burnish that down really good. We'll fold it over, burnish again. Now the rest of these are all going to fall in line like little soldiers across the page. So, get our score tape backing off. See where this is? We are just going to butt that right up next to it and press. And your pages should be coming in nice and straight. If they're a little off, it's okay, especially if this is your first album you've ever made. The chances of anybody really noticing it is slim, especially when you have your decorative paper in there. You have a lot of other things going on. So right now, so that this does not confuse anyone, I'm going to erase this so it doesn't look like I'm working upside down. Next one, we're going to do the same thing. Just line it up there, top and bottom, and press. And we have our last one. And we'll put that right on in, right next to the other one. Right there. And you don't have to do it quickly like I just did. You just take your time at it. There's no rush. So, so there is our inner pages. Looks good. Now you will still have your three and seven eighths by five and three quarter plastic piece and your six and a half by eight and a quarter inner covers. These do not get placed until we start getting dec uh, our decorative paper on the outside and our frames ready to go. So we can just hold that off to the side. Let's move on to decorating the outside. So we are on decorating the outside. We're going to do a little prep work first. These are the covers. I'm just going to set those off to the side. We have both of our paper packs. I'm going to remove the sticker sheets, stick those to the side. This will save us some time. So what we want to do with each pack is get into them and start trimming off all those trim pieces that we see. And then for me to stay organized, I'm going to uh, take the two that match up and stick them together so that the matches are all in a nice pile. 
When you start clipping off all the trim pieces from this, we're just going to have a little separate pile to keep all these in in case we need to use these. In your paper pack, you will find two of these. This is what this side is, and this is the other side. This is the side that's going to show up, but in order for us to have the same cuts, uh, we're going to be looking at our paper like this. I'm just going to double mine up. Now one thing, if you are new to my tutorials, I try to stay consistent with how I tell you to measure. We always start on the left side of the screen and measure over this way. So if I needed to make a, a cut this way, we'll be turning our paper so that we can cut. And that way we're not all over the board. Measure this way, that way, and so forth. Uh, also, any leftover cuts that you have, we already have a pile uh, in our reserves, we call it, scrap pile reserves, of all our trim pieces. We also have a pile from all of our leftover cardstock from our pre-cuts and our plastics here. So we will have a separate pile for all of our leftover cuts from this. So let's begin. I'm just going to double these right on up and I'm going to turn my paper sideways. Measure over 6 and 7 eighths inch and cut. Another tip is generally when we make that cut, uh, the piece that's sitting off to our left is what we will be keeping. So this is going to go into our reserves. And I still have these doubled up. Looking at it like this now, we're going to measure over 9 inches and cut. This is what you should have. Now let's turn over this one and this one. That's our front and back covers. We're going to take one of these and flip it over. We'll use that for our spine. So here are our three pieces. We're just going to set two off to the side. We'll take this piece. Let's grab our album and uh, open it up. This piece is very simple. We're going to be applying score tape in just a moment, but how it's supposed to look is when you place it on the back, you should be able to center it in there so you are framed with your brown sugar or craft cardstock, just like that. But it is easier uh, just to open up that album and just lay it out flat because we do need to burnish. So let's grab our 3 8 inch score tape. And I have some left on, nope, right here. And we're going to place it all the way around like a picture frame to start. Once you have that down, let's run a piece right next to one side because our drits will be coming back onto that and we don't want any liftage. Then we're just going to place one down the middle and we're not carrying any weight or embellishments so this will be just fine and we'll go one on each side. We'll burnish that down really good, get all that air out from underneath that score tape, iron it down. So when, we're going to remove the score tape and just be mindful the side that has two is going to fall over here. I have all the score tape backing off. It's, if it's easier for you to look down on it like this to get it straight in there, do so, and then we can open up our album to make sure that it is all burnished down. So I'm just going to place that, open this up, and burnish. So now you can see I have a border around there. Let's grab our spine. And one thing is, is make sure that your edges are burnished really well. Now I tend to wrap around when I'm framing around with the score tape, so I do have to make sure I get those edges really good. All right, I'm gonna set this off to the side. 3 8 inch score tape. We're going to run around the outside edge like a picture frame. Next. Place two down the center, and let's remove the backing after we burnish that. Once you have that score tape backing off, you're going to see your two hinges here, but we're going to try and line up the same as what we have with the top and bottom of our back piece, and we're just going to try and 
keep that even as we can and we will place it and burnish really well and it should look something like this let's go on to this side now for this side what we're going to have to do is cut out and around on this but first what I'd like you to do is just place this down and try to line it up even with over there so that's nice and even all around if if you have a binder clip or something like that to kind of hold it in place um, I find that this is the easiest way for me at least for something like this and we'll just open that up we're going to take our pencil and draw around this now we can make this we can get this you don't have to be accurate we're going to be cutting it um, a lot wider than that. So here's my square. What I'm going to do is take my craft knife and just just start it off a little bit by placing an X. Okay, that's going to help me get my scissors in there. Now when I cut, you don't have to be accurate, but I'm going to go past those lines a bit. It will get covered up, so I'm probably about an eighth of an inch on the outside of that line I drew. Again, you do not have to be even because our frame is going to cover that. We're just going to do the best we can with getting that clipped. Because what we want to show through the edges is our craft. So, when we place this, we're going to kind of look again to see where it is we need to clip. Uh, we're probably going to have to, I'm going to have to clip a little bit more over here. And I'll just come in a little deeper and cut. And take a peek. That looks good to me, just like that. So that is how it's going to place. And once again, you do not have to be even around here. You just want to make sure that when you place this, you can still see your border of your craft, placing it evenly there. Because what's going to happen is we will have paper over this. So just you can use this actually as your guide to make sure that when you place it, you're not seeing your your polka dotted paper there. Let's flip this over and we're going to do score tape around the outside like a picture frame. We're also going to go right along that edge of where the cutout is. So this is what I have and we're just going to place a little piece here, a little piece up through here, now we do have the drits, so you'll want to place an extra row along that side and I think that'll be just fine. Let's burnish that down. Alright, we are set to go. The score tape backing is off and I am going to place this. Now if it's easier to open this up, which it might be, place it. So now when we place the first one, you should be able to place it, and this is I think my better side, but this gets wrapped, and we'll have a frame. Alright, I think the hard part is pretty much done with that. Now this, you can just stick this in your reserves in case we need to have a little piece of something off that in your paper pack you will find the wood grain the light one and on the back it looks like this now we're going to turn it looking at it like this excuse the background noise my Roomba is cleaning right now okay starting over here measure over seven inches and cut stick the smaller piece in your reserves now measure over nine inches and cut this is what you should have. Flip this on over. We're going to need our score tape. 
and I am grabbing my 3 8 inch and I'm going to line the outside edges like a picture frame and then the inside edges. I have mine on and I'm going to switch gears on us a little bit here. Uh, what we're going to do is cut this down a bit. I think it's going to be a little bit easier rather than getting too technical and wrap out and in and all that. So looking at your paper like this, we are 9 inches wide. I want you to measure over 7 inches and cut. So we are 7 inches wide turn this, measure over five inches. So we'll end up with a five by seven frame. This is gonna be much easier, less complicated and quicker. So let's remove our score tape backing. And with the, the green up, we're just going to match up our edges here. So that this is the same as this. If it's easier to do it like this and look at it like this, do so. And I think that's how I'm going to do it. And you might have a little bit of a black bit on the sides, which is fine. And we will place that. Now, what you can do if you have overhang is take your scissors and cut off that excess. You should be able to get through that medium weight chipboard. All right, once you have that, grab your piece and we're gonna go from the corner in on each of these sides. And we're gonna wrap it like we did before. It does not have to be even. So we'll grab our tool and help it. And we'll do that with each one of these. And this is where you can hide that imperfections um, from when we were cutting. So we're going to leave about a half inch or so. so that we have something to wrap, or three quarters, whatever it is you'd like to do, it's easiest. All these little pieces, in case we need it, are gonna go back into our reserves. Now we can grab our glue and glue down. And we'll do that with each one of our little flaps. And this is what your frame should look like. Now, if you need to stick this down on your mat and clean up a little bit better on your edges, do so. But once this is down, you will see that this will look really nice. All right, for this, let's grab our score tape. I'm a little, because of... Uh, I'm a score tape person. You can use your glue if you'd like. Just make sure that you get evenly around and especially around the place right here. Okay, we're going to place this. I'm going to open up my album here. It's going to be easier for me to see. And I'm going to be careful, make sure that it looks good, and I'm going to place this. Once you have it down, burnish. Okay, our next step is to get our pieces for right in here. In your paper pack, you will find this print. On the back, it looks like this. So all we're going to do here is we're going to measure over five inches and cut. Put the larger piece in your reserves. Let's turn it, measure over seven inches and cut. Let's open up our album and what's going to happen is this is going to place right over that. So what's going to show through is that and that's beautiful. 
So to make this easy, I am going to grab my 3 8 inch score tape and that should be almost covering that whole thing. So I'm going to go first around this inside edge and then I can use glue for the rest, I think, as long as I'm careful. And I'm going to get this down, this uh, backing up first and then I'll do my glue. Alright, let's turn this over. All we want to do is make sure that we get glue around the edges here. If we need to add more, we'll do so. Just make sure that you have it. And now we're going to place this. And do not poke through. Just get along those edges. Now you can kind of burnish down this way. That way we don't have glue all squirting out everywhere. And that looks good. Let's get our other piece ready to go. Our last piece is this frame. And this is going to go back behind. But we do have pieces to put in there. Find the piece that is the worst. And you're going to be looking at the worst side. This is my worst side. And this is my better side. And what I want to do is just line some 3 8 inch score tape around the inside of that frame, the inside edge, without going over. Because when we cut the, the plastic, when we cut that, we cut it slightly smaller than this 4 by 6 piece. So we didn't have to worry about it accidentally getting over the edge. We can actually get this on pretty good. And there will be some uh, cuts on our brown sugar cardstock that are not on the pre-cutting and scoring guide. Um, they are extras. So just make sure your piece is clean. And now, whoops, wrong side. And now we're going to place it over that score tape. And we're going to burnish that down. Okay, so now once we get our pieces in there and we lay that over, it's going to look really sharp. So now what we need to do is find our pieces for this. So for now, let's just set our book off to the side. I've got my album propped up here. Now on your sticker sheet, find this piece. If you want to change the world, go home and love your family. You're going to stick that down to your scrap card stock. You'll find the car. I love those colors. Stick that down and you'll find this little bitty flower. You'll stick that down. Once you've done that, you're going to cut out and around the pieces until you have just a little bit of cardstock border. Just a little one on each. And let's grab our 3D Zots. And you may want to pause the video while you get ready. Once you have that all cut out, let's flip that over. I got the car here. These are very strong. So I'm going to put one down here by the wheel. And because the plastic is covering, I don't have to worry about this getting caught, so I don't need that many. But I want to make sure that I'm evenly propped up there. And I think that should be, I'm going to put one right up there as well, just in case. Oops. Okay, so placing him, this little truck, whoops, I had it propped up for you. We're just going to place that right here. Okay, so for this piece, we just need one. And I'm going to kind of squish mine down there and put that back behind. Now if it's too wide for your piece, just kind of roll it in on itself like that. And I'm just going to stick that right here to pop that out. This piece, hang off. 
Now we need to place this over here. So take one last check to make sure that your frame is good. And we are going to use our score tape for this. So I'm just going to lay a piece all the way around. I'll clip off any overhang. And now, once you get the score tape backing off, it is time to place this. So I'm going to hold this up so I get this on correctly. But I just want to make sure that it is even. And I'm going to go with that. Then I'm going to press it down. Make sure that's down. So what you should have is a nice clean looking piece there. Now for this, this is going to come right in the center down from the frame a little bit and hang off. So we do need to grab a couple of our zots. And here's the top, so this would be the bottom. And I'm just going to place a couple down here just along the bottom. And for this I'm just going to lay my score tape at the top and then we're going to shape and get our flowers ready to go. So for this right about here is good for me and those dots will help pop up the bottom so it's dimension and it will fit nicely. So we have our cover all complete and now we're going to move on to a quick little tutorial on flower shaping, inking, and get our flowers on here. I'm using the Wild Aster Stamp and Die. So you'll want to make a template like this. Um, stamp your image here and here for your flowers. Label this one, two, three, and these are our number four. That way you can identify throughout the tutorial which size flowers that I'm using. And I will tell you uh, the size number so that you can get the same flowers as I do. So we're going to prep for this tutorial. And for the leaves, stamp it on a full sheet of 8.5 by 11. Now I may not use all of these, but the majority of these will be used. So I stamped it 4, and I have a row of 5, so you got about 20 on there. And we'll color one together. Now for the largest flower, what you're going to want to do is stamp this three times uh, in your bundled sta sage and three times in your summer sky. And to fit this all, what I did was the larger flower was stamped twice this way and then I had to turn it around like that. Now for the smaller sizes, number the three and fours, what I ended up doing is stamping this five times across in my summer sky and five times across in my bundled sage. And this looks a little purple over here because I must have forgotten to clean my thing, but I'm going to use it still. Let's begin with the leaves. Very easy. And what I stamped that with is the peeled paint. This is our really uh, darkest green. and These are real easy to do. What you'll want to do is just go around dark around the edges here. And you don't have to be perfect. And I'm going to go dark down the center. Just kind of get some of that darker green. So once you've done that, you just kind of fill it in a little. You don't have to fill it completely. Then what I like to do is take my crushed olive and blot. It's that simple. Let's move on to our number one and two flowers. And this is the bundled sage. All I'm going to do is hit the edges really dark going around here just like that. Then what I'm going to do is go dark in the center and just start swirling out like that. Okay, that's it. Now for the summer sky we do blend a little bundled sage in there. And I'm going to start down here at the largest one so you can see. And I'm just going to go dark on the tips here. And this can be a very light color or it can be a very darker color. And I like to hit the edges with a little dark first. 
and it's pretty much the same thing um, when we go into the center. We're just going to kind of swirl darker and then we'll swirl out. Now we can always add more blue to the outside. Now take your bundled sage and just swirl it and just like that. So it kind of blends out a little. Now this may does may look funny to you. This may not look good to you, but when we're all done, it'll look good. And you can even go a little lighter in the center, but it's all up to you. And on all of these, we'll be doing the same technique. So let's take a moment, about 15 minutes or so, and color all of our flowers and leaves. I have all mine colored. Now I'm going to go and die cut these out. If you are new to flower shaping and want to know what I'm using, I'm using by Heartfelt Creations the Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit. They do have a smaller version kit that's less expensive, but uh, I do like this. I get the larger mat, which you can see is very well loved. And you get the stylus with several different tips. So I'm going to use the tips that come with the essential kit right here. So we're all on the same page. So we've got a smaller head and one slightly bigger. We'll use that. So I am going to start with, on the blues, I have three of my number twos here. And I have one of the number threes here. For the other flower, I'm just going to use three of the number twos. Let's start with the uh, bundled sage here. They're all the same. What we're going to do is we're going to take the larger nib, and this is real easy. You're just going to take it here at the edge and roll it in. Now, don't hold your flower down when you're doing it. Just kind of let it do its own thing. And we're going to just keep rolling them in all the way around. I got one done, and I wanted to point out <clears throat> that when you're rolling them in, it's very simple. You just take it at the tip and roll in. It will just come on in for you there. And I'm going to, whoa, I threw that one. I'm going to continue doing that with the third one. I have all three of mine rolled in. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to turn these over. Just kind of Roll it out like that. We'll use the smaller tip, push down in the center, and roll it around. And you'll start seeing those um, flower petals start to lift up on you. And you do not have to be perfect on this. Just roll it around in there. And we'll do the same for this one. Now one thing is, is I like to use 65 pound paper when stamping and die cutting. It's easier to shape. I don't have to wet it down like you would with 110 pound, like spritz it. So I like that and my glossy accents does the rest of the work for me with stiffening them up as well as glossing them up. So for this I'm going to be using my hot glue gun, quick tacking. It is very dirty and well loved, but it does the job. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab one of my petals. It matters not which one. And I'm just going to add a little glue. And you definitely want to place it on your mat. And then just kind of offset those petals. Once you have that, you can use your nib to press down in the middle. And we'll layer one more right on in there. and just press on in there. And your flower will have its little shape. All right, let's apply our prills to the center here. And what you're gonna do is grab your glue. And in the center, you'll just put a dab of your glue in there, just like that. Now you may want to get a little tray or something. I'm just going to grab my lid here, but you'll just dump some in there. And then you can pour it back out into the lid. And there you have your pearls in there. And you'll want to let that dry. While that's drying, let's go move on to our next flower. 
Now, on the smallest one, which is our number three, you are going to want to put some color on the back. And you can just swipe your color on there. And this is just on the smallest one. And I'll just put a little bundled sage to swirl around. And then the only reason why we do that is because these are the ones that get popped up. So, all right, what we're going to do with all three of these is the same technique that we did, and these are our number two flowers, is to roll them in. So let's do that with each one. I have all three of my number twos rolled in, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing as we did with the other flower. Just swirl it around until they pop up. And sometimes padding works too in the center there. All right, let's assemble these. And again, I'm gonna try and offset them a little bit. Just press down on in there. Now, for our number three flower, here's the stamp side. We're gonna just place that down, and we're gonna use the smaller nib to just kind of pat and roll those in. And again, try not to hold your flower down. I've got glue strings there. So this is what you should have. And what we're gonna do is just leave it like that in its little ball. We'll apply some glue and we're gonna set that right in the center. And then we can use our tool to kind of get in there and press down. Once your glue is dried, you can kind of pop those out a bit with your tool. And it's gonna get all crazy on you and that's just fine. Now what we're gonna do is put our glue in the center and I'm putting a little more glue in that one and I'm gonna pour them in prills. Then I'll just dump them back. All right, so there is our flower. We're going to let the pearls dry and we're going to grab our glossy accents. All right, I put some glossy accents on my little scratch piece and I've also got a clean sheet right here. I like to use a brush for the majority of my uh, applications. Now one thing about glossy accents, it is a medium. It is very sticky when it is wet and then it dries clear and is not sticky. So what you see here is what it's going to look like when it's dry. So I like to just hold by the stem. Usually usually uh, the stem is covered anyway. So I've got that on there. That's how it's going to dry. So we're gonna need two of these leaves for our cover. And you can go ahead and get all your leaves ready to go too. Now for the flower here, I'm not sure if my prills are completely dried yet. I'm just gonna grab at the tip of one of those flowers and you're just going to apply it. And I like to be quick about it, so, because uh, it's very sticky. And then when I come around to that one leaf, I'll just grab somewhere else and just get it on there. If you want more gloss, you can add more. But that's pretty glossy there. And that's how it's going to dry, how it looks. On this, pretty much the same thing here. So I'm just gonna try to get those bottom layers too. And this is really gonna stiffen up our flowers, so um, on the cover and on the inside. Uh, so they don't get uh, destroyed. Now here, I'm just kind of brushing them back in, but then I'm going to brush them back out so I can get some of that glossy accents on the outside and the inside there. Just like that. And then I'll let those dry. Now if you get a couple that are wanting to stick together and stuff, you can just kind of, before it's done drying, just kind of pull them apart. Now one thing is when you are done applying all your glossy accents just to your leaves and stuff, um, you'll, you'll also want to, after about a minute of putting it over on a clean sheet, is actually to grab it while it's still wet and kind of lift it up to make sure that glossy accents isn't sticking it down to your paper. And that helps too. As long as you can move them around, they won't stick. So I'm going to continue on so uh, to get these all ready to go, my leaves at least. 
And then during the tutorial, before we begin, I'll be telling you what size flower, we'll shape them, we'll apply glossy, we'll set them off to the side, and then we will build our pages together or whatever we're working on there. Now, immediately after, don't leave your brush to sit. It will destroy your brush sticky and it will be stiff and, and you won't be able to use it again. So when I'm done uh, getting these leaves ready to go, immediately it goes to the sink. Uh, dishwashing soap, hand soap like Dove or, or whatever you have, make sure you scrub it clean, let it dry, and it will be good as new again. Otherwise, you'll destroy it. And I like to use an older brush anyway, just in case uh, I forget. While the glossy accent is drying, um, on your sticker sheet, you will find this. Place this on your craft cardstock scrap piece and then cut out and around it. We're going to open up our album here and this is going to place right here. We'll just glue that down and then we're going to get one side of our jits down too. Just bring that up there your drifts. Now you have the hook and you have the eye. If you have a little binder clip this will be helpful. So what we're going to do is put the eye down and then the hook at the end of the tutorial is what we attach after we have all of our stuff in. So right now I'm just dotting on some glue here and I'm going to, and you don't want to have it to where it's gobby on there, just enough glue. We're going to place this somewhere center on our page. And once you have that off to the side, grab your hook really quick and just make sure you can still get it through. And that looks good to me and we're going to clamp it down. If you have a little scratch piece, you can use that to help you get any glue that's smudged out onto your paper. And then we'll just clamp it and allow that to dry. Okay, as soon as my glossy accents has dried, I'm going to resume by showing you the placement of our flowers. My glossy accents are dry. So grab a couple leaves, place one right on down here and just place one right here. You can arrange these in just a moment. The blue flower is going to be up here and the green one goes right here. So as soon as you find the spot that looks the best, I'm just going to kind of bring these in. Now you know where your flowers need to be glued down. So I'm going to start with this one here. I'll get a little glue. I can get more glue on there in just a moment. I don't want to cover up the sentiment. And I'm going to use my hot glue for quick tacking. I'm going to get the green one down. And now for this one. It's going to go up just like this. You can arrange it any way that you would like. Our cover flowers are done. So as soon as the glue has dried, what we're going to do is we have two more pre-cuts to this. We had two pieces that were six and a half by eight and a quarter. Let's set this off to the side. And on the side that you wrote on, let's grab our quarter inch. Let's line our quarter inch score tape all the way around each one of these like a picture frame. Once you've done that, what we're going to do on both of them is place a piece of our score tape down the middle and then we'll do two on either side of that on both of these. Once you have the score tape on, you'll remove it. Now inside here, you'll notice that we are six and a half inches or so tall, which if you were to place that down, it's the same as our inner pages there. 
So what we're going to do is on the inside of the cover as well as the back, we're going to remove our score tape and we're going to line that up with where it comes onto the cover here. Top and bottom. And place these and we'll burnish those down. We're going to do it here and we're going to do it right back here. And what this does is just give us a more finished look on our album. So I am placing my inner, and make sure you are not near your uh, hinge there. Just kind of do the best you can. And be careful on the center. So that's all there is to it. And we'll do it right back here too. We've got the inside all done as far as decorating the outside. We are now on to page one. We're on page one and we have several pre-cuts to do. However, let's do some prep work and make this easier for us by pre-cutting our base decorative pages for all of our pages in our book. So we're gonna get all our pages cut and ready and set off to the side. So in your paper pack, you will find two of these prints. On the back, it looks like this. So once you find both of yours, we're just going to double these up. We're going to make one cut here. Measure over 8 inches and cut. This is what you should have here. What I'd like you to do is we're going to double these up again. We're going to measure over 6 inches and cut. This is what you should have. So what I would like you to do is take one of these and one of these and just set them off to the side in a pile. These two we're going to flip over. We're going to set these off to the side in a pile. Let's get our other pages cut. In your paper pack you will find these two prints. This one looks like this on the back, okay? And we'll just look at it like this with the lines. You'll also find this one, and on the back it is these beautiful flowers. So what we're going to do is with the stripes of the paneling going this way and the stripes going this way on this, we'll double these up Measure over 8 inches and cut. This is what you should have. We're just going to double them up again the way we had it. Now we're going to turn it this way. Measure over 6 inches and cut. So you should have two of these. Flip them over. This is the side I think we're going to work with. We'll stick these in our pile. And as far as these, we'll put those in our pile. In your paper pack, you will find this pretty print of the wood grains. And on the back, it looks like this. All right, looking at your paper like this, measure over 8 inches and cut. Now let's turn that, measure over 6 inches and cut. All right, let's verify we have all of our cuts made. They're all six by eight. You should have two of these, and you'll have two of these. You should have two of these. You should have two of these. And you should have two of these. We are all set. Now we're not going to stick these in our reserves. What we're going to do is stick them off to the sides. So when we tackle each page, all we have to do is grab the correct base decorative page out. We're going to prepare for our page one flowers and we'll do it for page two as well. What I have is two of the blue number four size and two of the green and I almost forgot, you're going to need two of your leaves. So we're just going to shape these like we did the one uh, flower, just kind of rolling these on in, and we'll do it for these as well. And then once we have it all rolled in, we flip it over, and these are single layers. We flip it over, 
we apply our glue, we then put our prills in there, and then our glossy accents. And then we'll set them off to the side to dry. And then by the time we're done with page one ready for these, they should all be dry. So do not layer them. They're all going to be single layers. So here are mine. They are ready to dry. Our page one is going to be this print here. Very pretty. On the back, it doesn't matter which one's on the back, but that is what we will be using. Now let's go over our pre-cuts. Um, by the way, if you have not seen my tutorial for the tutorial organizer, you might want to, to make this box and then all your pre-cuts go in the correct page. So when you're ready to tackle your pages, you just grab out your folder and grab your pieces. I've got my scoring board out here so that we can go over our scoring together as well. Um, make sure we didn't make any mistakes or I didn't make any mistakes. So we cut a four by seven and a half piece. We called it our side pocket. We cut a six by six and a half inch piece and we called this left fold out bottom. And we laid this on our scoring board so we were six and a half inches across. We scored at a half inch and five eighths inch. We next cut a three and a half by seven and a half piece. We called it a left FO pocket. We cut a six by seven inch piece. We called it our right FO top. We laid this on our scoring board and we scored it at a half inch and five eighths inch. We cut a six and a quarter by eight and a half inch. We called it a folder. We laid this so we were eight and a half across and we scored right down the middle at four and a quarter inches. We had one more piece to the puzzle here, and that was a three and one eighth by four and one eighth, and we just called it a mat. And there was no scoring on that. So let's begin. Grab your four inch by seven and a half inch side pocket. And we're gonna need our quarter inch score tape for this and just make sure that your print is going the right way. You're not upside down with this. And this is just one style of a pocket. There's other ways to make pockets. All right, once you get your score tape on, you will clip off any overhang. Definitely burnish that down really good. And I'll use my craft knife to get this backing off here. All right, I'm gonna turn this like this. My score tape is down here. It's just easier so I don't get my head in the video. Lay your paper up against, and we're gonna lay it like this because it's a side pocket, against the flat edge of your scoring board. Place this down so you have approximately even overhang. Now, just to the right of your decorated paper, find your slot and then you can now score. And that will give just a little more room. And then on this side, you can kind of shimmy it over and do the same, line it up there. And that can help you get a better pocket fit. Once you have that, and again, my sticky is down here, you can wrap this back around and bring this all the way down to the bottom of your page and just kind of give a little press. And then from this side, out, and then just burnish. We'll flip it over, we'll grab our glue, and it looks like I'm flogged here a bit. And we'll apply glue 
to these. And then we'll just fold those over. And there is your pocket. So our opening is right here. If you are die cutting, you'll want to add your trim now. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using. So once you do a few of these, if you're adding your trim, you'll kind of get the hang of uh, the idea of how I'm doing this. So for this, I just, out of my reserves, I grabbed a one and three quarter inch by six inch wide. I'm in the frame of card leafy borders. There's four sizes. I'm using this size here. When I place this on my die cutting machine, I'm going to center this side to side. And I'll probably leave a good quarter inch right here of cardstock showing. I am not using the other bracket that goes around. I am just using this plate. And I'm going to run this through my die cutter. So this is what I have. Now one thing I'm going to do is come over here and try to leave a quarter inch over here and over here. If you'd like to go wider you can. but. So now what I've got is a nice thing. And this should be six inches tall. So all I have to do is glue this down right on top of this. And it is easier just to add your glue right here. And you want to have that little lip there because that's what's going to go on top of this. And I'll just place it. So there is my trim. In your reserves you will find this 12 inch by about 4 inch piece. On the back it looks like this. Measure over 6 inches and cut. So one thing about this is we are going to be too wide when we glue this down. So what I'd like you to do is uh, place this down and leave yourself about a sixteenth or an eighth inch of your cardstock showing. And we'll make sure we are centered top to bottom if you are seeing any of your cardstock. Now, if you look over here, you're going to notice that you're going to have this overhang. So what we're going to do is measure to fit by just placing a pencil mark at the edge of our page and now we know how much we need to trim off. So let's do that. I always say to verify your piece before gluing it down and with good reason. Um, the reason is is sometimes we make errors. So we are going to apply glue to this and we are going to place this down and just make sure nothing hangs over the side of your cardstock. It should be even about. Okay? And then we'll burnish that down. The next piece that we are going to need, and by the way, we do pick up the speed later on in the video after everyone's had an opportunity to learn how to make these type of pockets, fold outs, attach them, and so forth. So we kind of tend to go slow at first. All we're going to do right now is fold on each of those score lines and make sure they're even. Now we're going to attach this. You have, looking at it like this, our hinge is going to be off to the left here. You have an outside score line and an inside. On that outside one, I want you to pinch and crease. So you'll still be able to see that other score line there. We're going to hook that back behind our sheet. And then we'll just make sure that we are even top and bottom. Once you are even, I want you to pinch and hold it. If you feel it, that your paper slipped, realign it. Okay. Then we're going to add some glue to this. And I tend to like to add the glue more towards the edge than down in here. And the reason why is I will show you why. Once we get that down and burnish it down, our glue will spread out for us. But if you get it too close, you'll see that glue will squirt, squirt out in here. And that's not what we want. So now that we have this, we can fold back on our other score line and then push it on the side until we feel that it is flat. 
like that. And that is our spacing. Let's open this up and we're going to find our paper for in here as well as we will be working with our three and a half by seven and a half left FO pocket. So I'm going to set this off to the side here and select our paper. In your paper pack you will find this pretty striped blue print. On the back we have the little tag page. Okay, what we're going to do is actually look at it like this so it's sideways. Okay, we're going to measure over 5 and 5 eighths inch and cut. So this is what you should have. Let's look at it like this. Measure over 5 and 3 quarters inch and cut. Our final piece here is this and let's verify that we are going to fit. If you were to place this down, this should give you a nice craft border here, 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 and it will also be away at least about an eighth of an inch away from that outside score line. And anything that you do when you have fold outs, you really need to stay away. And a good rule of thumb is about an eighth of an inch from that outside score line there. So if you were to place your paper, measure in one eighth, set this down, you should still have your border. Okay, so we're going to be looking at it where the stripes are like this. Let's grab our quarter inch score tape and we're going to place a piece at the bottom. And we are going to wrap this pocket. Be very careful uh, if you are going to be placing this on your scoring board and scoring here and just to the left that you don't exceed that allowance that will push you into the, the fold outs uh, score line. So let's just give that a little bend here and we're going to place this over leaving equal overhang right to the bottom and we'll press in the center Make sure you're all lined up there. And then from the center, we press out. And you'll probably see that this will lift up a bit. And that helps too with giving a little more room. Once you have that, we'll just flip it over and fold by hand on each one of these. And you don't want it so tight that your paper's gonna be folding over with you. It's just a fold around. And now we'll glue down those tabs. And there is our pocket. In your reserves you will find this piece. On the back it is this and it's the same print as our base and we are four by 12 inches right now. So we're gonna flip it over, look at it like this, so the little bulbs are over here. Measure over five and five eighths inch and cut. We are five and five eighths inch across here. And we need to turn it, so just turn it so we're looking at the print like this. Measure over three and three eighths inch and cut die cutters or paper punchers if you are going to be using a trim and I'm going to be go ahead and die cut it I'll show you what I'll be using I am using this now on this piece what's gonna happen is when this is glued down and we have our little lip of cardstock this is just gonna glue right on over like that so for this piece what I did was in our frame of card leafy borders, it is this one once again. Just look in your reserves for a piece of cardstock and the plate that goes over it. So just kind of center that in there and run it through your die cutter and that's what you will get here. Okay, everyone, let's apply glue to this. Bring it down to the bottom of your pocket 
and glue that down. And if you have trim or whatever, I am going down with mine. So on this particular piece, we do have a little bit hanging over the edge. We can just clip that. I got mine all glued down and burnished down. Now we're gonna apply glue to the back of this and we are gonna glue it inside that panel, steering clear of our outside hinge there. And we'll burnish that down. On your sticker sheet, you will find this one and this one. Peel off the sticker and place it onto cardstock, scrap cardstock, whatever's in your reserves. And then you're going to cut out and around it, just leaving like a sixteenth or just a smidgen of cardstock showing around it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to glue these two together like this. And you may want to pause the video after you see what I do here. Pause right now and get your stickers uh, all ready to go. But what we're going to do is overlap like this. Next, we're going to place this so we can use it as a little tuck area for our photo mats. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to go down this side underneath here and then I'm going to go straight on over here and I'll leave this open. So this is open and open. I'll bring it down just like this and we'll burnish. And any glue that squirts out definitely get that all cleaned up. So now this is what we have and you can still get things back behind. Let's close that up. Next thing we want to get at is the 6 by 7 inch right FO top. Bottom and then this means top. It's going to overlap. Let's fold on those score lines. and we're going to attach this. So on our flap is over here. On that outside score line, pinch and crease it and hook that back behind and line it up top and bottom with your other little fold out as best you can. And once you have it in place there, pinch and hold it in place and then we will tack this down. Once you have that, now you can open this up and fold back on the other score line and then push it in. All right, let's get one of our magnets out. I have a plus and I will get that little adhesive backing off. I'm going to come in about three quarters of an inch here from that and then I'm going to grab a minus and set that right on top and I'm going to remove the score or the backing little pluck thing make sure you are where you are supposed to be now if you are misaligned when you glued it on this is where you can align sometimes just giving a little bit of a bend and then just coming over and don't pull it. You want it to go natural so that it doesn't pull back um, against that. And then once it's down, you can carefully flip that back up. Now your magnet's set to where it's supposed to be.